All right, Joellen. So we're going to talk about pests and diseases of seasonal colors. So yes. you want to start with that? Well, there are several things we can do. Um, so you've had planted some plants this year and they didn't do well. Maybe mm -hmm. some others did. And you want to know maybe what went wrong or right. what's going on. Um, I suggest doing crop rotations, especially a lot of people tend to put the same flowers in every year. <laughs> they might, you know, do a different color of the same flower, but they'll tend to do a lot of the same flowers every year, and that's okay. where you get into trouble. So not only is it more interesting for you and your neighbors to mm -hmm. see different flowers in your bed, but uh, it's also actually better to have the crop rotation okay. for the diseases and the bugs. Okay, makes sense. It does. Uh, one example would be uh, like vinca. Okay. A lot of people have trouble with vinca, and it, all of a sudden they'll start having one little spot will wilt, <laughs> And then it keeps, the whole plant will wilt, and then it dies. And, and right. they're, they're mystified as what happened. Um, well, they've got it in the right place. You know, it's sunny. But it might be too wet because mm -hmm. the number one disease for, for vinca seems to be phytophthora. Okay. And so right. you can't really, you know, unless you just dig up all the soil and rechange all of it, that's always going to be there. In fact, that's a disease that's just commonly everywhere. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, what you might like to do is change that out. Instead of putting vinca in every year, go then next year do something else that likes the sun, like ageratum, celosia, lantana, marigold, zinnia. Mm -hmm. All of those are not so susceptible to the phytophthora. So, okay. Yeah. Like, like the vinca is. Okay. So change them out. Another, now that's sun. Well, what about some shade? Okay. Now the number one problem with impatience mm -hmm. And, we, and it's worse in other parts of the country than it is here, um, is the impatient powdery mildew. Okay. And what will happen is, and, and I know people have experienced this, because I, I, ha I have. I have, yeah. Um, all of a sudden they get yellowy and kind of <laughs> start to wilt, and it, you, you, most people don't look on the back side of the leaf. Mm -hmm. And if they did, there'd be a white, powdery, fluffy uh, part of the disease spores mm -hmm. coming out there. Uh, so, but then the leaves fall off and then you end up with a bunch of sticks. That's right. And then the <laughs> next thing you know, the sticks die. So, <laughs> I, it, but that powdery mildew, that, that organism seems to stay in the ground for a while. So it's really good to not plant there for several years okay. to, to see if that will go away. And some parts of the country is not going away, but here wow. it, it seems to, to be good in some places and bad and worse in others. So I right. would try something else. And we and, actually learned about that maybe a couple of years ago, you know, yes. here, you know, in this area specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, yeah, it's, it's been a problem. Yeah, and, and they can put other things in like Terenia. Okay. There's some go gorgeous Terenia and New Guinea impatiens, caladiums. Ah, yeah. And there's a new impatient that's called Bounce that's out there. Okay, that I've heard of that. Is also uh, available. And okay. then, then, of course, another thing, problem that people have is petunias. Petunias will suddenly turn wilty and then just die, uh -huh. suddenly. <laughs> um, and that's, a lot of that condition is too wet also, but it also could be the botrytis or the phytophthora again. Right. So try something different, begonias, coleas, um, Potato, sweet potato vines, okay, sun patients, mm -hmm. anything that likes kind of a sunny, part sunny, partly shady area. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, that, in other words, the host plants, so crop rotation and resistant varieties are good to add to the ground if you've had trouble with certain plants okay. during the growing season. Let, let me ask you about the phytophthora root rot. Mm -hmm. So what do we need to do with our soils, though? Do we need to build the soils up or... Yes, what do you think? well drained, because all well -drained. of these diseases, and that will go into our, uh, our cultural, another okay. thing, we have to yeah. look for cultural problems, and we've got to think of a dis disease triangle, and a lot of people go, what, disease? what is that? <laughs> yeah, what is well, it? <laughs> a disease triangle, there's three things that have to be present for a disease to take hold, and that is the host plant, mm -hmm. the pathogen has to be present, which okay. it most always is, and then the environment. So what of that we can, can control is the host plant, and the other thing we can control is the environment. Right. Right. Now, we can't stop it from raining on <laughs> our plants, but we can get the soil so it, well, it drains well. Mm -hmm. And so that's okay. what I would suggest, amend the soil. 
build it up sort of like what we did out here out front in our flower bed. Right. We, we raised it up just a little bit so that it would drain better. Okay. And that can help out with all of those disease and insect problems because if, it, if it's weakened, not only do the diseases take over, but insects take over too. Yeah, here they come. Here they come right you know, forward for the most part. And of course, if you have something that dies, another thing you can do to help prevent disease and insects in the future is to take those dead plants and actually destroy them. Don't put those in the compost uh -huh. pile. Okay. Because then you're just going to spread the disease everywhere you put your compost. That's right. You have spores all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> That's right. You don't want to do that. And of course, the last thing you need to do is, as a last resort, is chemical control. Okay. And I would suggest using the least environmentally harmful chemical that you can just to get the disease, like aphids. Aphids get on a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, easily controlled with insecticidal soaps. And caterpillars, like uh, the cannas get the caterpillar uh, the leaf, the leaf roller. Leaf roller. That's right. And very easily controlled with BT, right. which is Bacillus thuringiensis. So uh -huh. very easily controlled with those things. And makes your plants look real pretty. But be sure, whatever you use, what if you're going to use a chemical, make sure you've got the plant, the pest ID'd. That's right. It makes a difference. And because you've got to know what you're trying to control yes. and then read the label directions because you really don't want to spray, you know, any more than you need That's to. Right. And watch the time of day you do that because you don't want to, you, you're, you're, you're displaying flowers and you've got mm. pollinators on them. So you want to do that That's at point. the end of the That's day, in the evening, just before the sun sets when the, the pollinators are not out foraging. Good point. Yeah, we don't want to harm those pollinators. No. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, always read and follow the label, though. You yes. know, always tell folks. Just don't take our word for it. Yeah. Go ahead and read the label for yourself, and you'll be just fine. And you know something else, too? Mm -hmm. Some water, you know, just a, you know, a jet force of water, for the most part, can knock off some of those aphids and some of those uh, you know, other pests as well. That's, you know, just put it in a little spray true. bottle, and just mm -hmm. you can knock off the aphids, because they're soft-bodied. And you can easily knock them off. Maybe and another thing that I would like um, people to realize is that a wilting plant does not necessarily mean it needs more water. Mm. Just check the soil and see if it actually is still moist or not. Because okay. you, you know, a wilting plant doesn't always mean it needs more water. And a lot of these diseases are, have problems with being overwatered. Okay. Overwatered. And watering on the top of the soil surface and not on the foliage is another good key to trying to right. keep the environment in a state so that the plants don't get weakened okay. to get diseases in insects. All right, Joel, we definitely appreciate that information. Good as always. No